How much bigger do you want to get? I'm good, Ron. On today's show, time to meet Minnesota's own firewood lady. Every day, she moves log trucks in while firewood goes out. Next, if you like biking, why let a little snow stop you? We'll introduce you to the bike stompers who found where there's a will, there's a bike trail. And what's wild in the kitchen today? To Laura Shera gets ready for the we'll cold weather season with some recipes that'll warm you up in the chilliest of days. And our Minnesota Bound Classic this week deals with the fine art of logging. Logging the old fashioned way with minimal damage to the rest of the forest. Those stories and more next. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. Well, it's beginning to feel like fireplace season, right? Which means firewood, which brings up our first story. Chances are the firewood that you have comes from, guess, the firewood lady. If you've ever put another log on the fire, take a look at your load. then it's time you meet Angie Nelson. We'll probably take that other half of birch that you got. She is Minnesota's firewood lady. Do you burn wood yourself? Oh, absolutely, Ron. <laughs> Do you? Yes. Not just wintertime. All of this wood that you see across just this side right here. All the time. Is 1,100 quart. We ship this five times what you see here. Every we year. We ship out of here every year. How much bigger do you want to get? I'm good, Ron. Uh, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Every day, 24-7. I don't, I don't miss a day here in my wood yard. Angie is CEO of JN Firewood Incorporated in rural Fort Ripley, Minnesota. Are there bigger wood companies than you, firewood companies? Oh, sure there is. is there? Not in Minnesota, no. Job description. How are you? Pretty good. Wood traffic manager, wood cutting superintendent for 12 employees. So I do all the book work here. Company accountant. But I do it at night. Mother of two school-aged boys. How do you find time to play the role of mother? Oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> and business partner. That's your husband, Joe, right? I'm the skid steer, yes. With her husband of 13 years. Is he a good worker? Joe Nelson. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On a recent winter day at company headquarters, it seemed like rush hour for logging trucks. Load after load, log after log stacked into piles. Nearby, nifty machines methodically and in minutes turned tree trunks into neatly cut and split firewood. Very impressive, especially if you've ever tried splitting an oak tree on your own. Is this all Minnesota wood? No, it is not. Your basic woods that grow here would be your maples, birch, um, red oaks, white oaks, things like that. We also do have the pinion pines, the alligator junipers, mesquites, pecans. Um, those are all trucked up full semi loads to us by log form. And from where? Um, that all comes up out of Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, places like that. The variety of wood satisfies their customers, ranging from Twin Cities restaurants needing wood for cooking pits to convenience stores who sell wood bundles to residential homes with fireplaces. With elder here, it wouldn't be this big. <laughs> and that's the truth too, Yeah. you know? Because I couldn't do it all. Husband Joe, however, is the family's entrepreneur. About 16, uh, started with a pickup truck. He started a firewood business as a teenager. To make extra money, uh, delivering it, selling it. Growing up in Fort Ripley. You know, uh, it was a hard way to do it back then. Uh, it's changed a lot now. What happens in this uh, silvery building? One key to their success. That there is a kiln dried. Happens in this building. Kiln dried heat treat certified firewood. What it is, it has to go into a kiln uh, and it's got to get heat treated at, at the center core. It has to stay 140 degrees at the center core for, uh, I do believe, 12 hours. It's got to, at the center core, which takes time. The high heat kills insects and diseases meaning the wood is approved for shipping anywhere outside of Minnesota. I know we've shipped wood to Hawaii and stuff like that, but foreign, I, I mean, we get calls all the time, you know, to go to different, to go to different countries. You know, just like our birch, I mean, our, the Minnesota birch, we ship it 
all over, a lot to the East Coast. I mean, we'll probably ship approximately three to four semi-loads a week out there. The East Coast demand for white birch got a boost in December of 2011. It's, it started with a phone call, like anybody else would call and order would. When the Wall Street Journal ran a story about holiday gift ideas, including Minnesota Yule Logs from Angie. We got a phone call from one of our clients in Minneapolis, and he called and said, you wouldn't even believe it, you guys are in the Wall Street Journal. I thought he was full of BS. I'm like, yeah, whatever, <laughs> right. Why do they want white beer for first? Because of the romantic, the fragrance, the smell, the pretty blue flame. Coming up, we'll introduce you to the Bike Stompers. Yes, they stomp in the snow for fun. Can you believe it? Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Seven Clans Casino. And by Connecticut. Seems like if you enjoy riding a bike, nothing stops you. So even if there is snow, what do you do? You hold a bike stomp. Turn on the lights. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> slap on the snowshoes and waddle on down the path. Tonight we're actually gonna stomp the trail. A stomp? We got a six, eight inches of snow and we need to pack the trail down so that we can get our bikes on it. The best way to do that is to get uh, snowshoes and go out there and stomp. Stomp? Stomp for what? We're with the Minnesota Off-Road Cyclists. We're a, an advocacy and trail building uh, organization. We build mountain bike trails, pretty much any of the mountain bike trails in the Twin Cities. The problem is we get a lot of snow and it's just too deep for us to get through with our, with our bicycles. So what we do is we, somebody declares a group stomp, like what's happening tonight. Well, the stomping isn't maybe the funnest thing in the world, but you know, it's good when we get a lot of friends out here and we just have a good time walking around. Probably got a quarter to a half a mile on the, until we get to a rock crossing. We're gonna wanna stomp down that rock crossing pretty nicely because it's an obstacle, it's fun to do. Most of the stompers are avid mountain bike riders who believe a little snow, or even lots of snow, needn't end their bike rides. The next step that'll happen is we'll, we'll bring in what we call the fat bikes. It's the Surly Pugsley and a couple knockoff uh, brands. They actually have four inch wide tires and that's what we'll be riding. And we'll get out there and ride, uh, hopefully ride it in if it's packed enough. Before the biking, however, comes the stomping. And so they stomp and stomp Stomp the night away. Forward, mush. It's buried now, but there's actually a nice, it's cool rock right there that we like to ride over. My, my, such enthusiasm for riding over the rocks. Bob acts like it's summer and dresses for it too. It looks kind of funny, but, but it probably doesn't look any funny than if you're looking at me in leotards, so. But the, the Hawaiian shirt, they're cheap. They make a nice windbreaker, they breathe, and it's been kind of a trademark for me. This is a Surly Pugsley. It's built so that the frame can accommodate big fat tires. So you see these are like 3.8, basically four inches wide. Um, that's gonna help us float over the snow better. Getting ready for a good ride this morning. Beautiful snow, should be fun. And so off they go, like a dog sled on fat tires. I like the challenge, the snow, it changes. Every time you ride, there's something different. The trail just kind of, you know, becomes slippery one time, grippy one time, the obstacles get covered or partially covered. So it's always kind of a, an adaptive trail. You never know what you're gonna get. So a split second, you could be off the trail and some of us actually do go off the trail. 
<laughs> you know, I think a big part of it's the camaraderie with your friends. You know, we're each kind of egging each other on and pushing each other to see what we can do out here. And you know, that, that's, a, that's a big part of it for me. I got started in the mountain biking probably about 10, 11 years ago. A friend of mine loaned me a bike and said, you got to come out and do this. I borrowed his bike and of course I crashed it and then, then I had to get a bike of my own and now I don't know how many of them are hanging in the basement. Alas, as in any pursuit of life's escapes, there are always reality checks. It's tough when you get off and it's an upslope. It's hard to get back on your bike and, and get the wheels going forward. Yes, but the joy of biking in the cold always seems to override the task of stomping those rocky trails. It's a beautiful day out here today, with really sticking to it. Almost like a taste of summer. In a fall harvest Up next, Laura Shera gets wild in the kitchen with another tried and true recipe. Don't miss good eating. Also get a nice sauce. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Ellsworth Creamery and by Ice Force, proven hard water gear. Hey, it's time to go wild in the kitchen. Let's see what Laura Shera is cooking up today. Today we're getting wild in the kitchen in a fall harvest sort of way and I'm here with Chef Paul Lynch from Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Bar and Chef, we are cooking some duck, is that correct? That's right, today's a fall meal. So, duck. The first thing I like to do with duck is I like to prepare a nice brine. Okay. And the brine is very simple. It's sugar, it's salt, and pickling spice. Uh, duck, I like to, to soak it overnight and all we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it out, okay? Once you have, you have your duck, you want to start off by patting it dry. Now why is it so important to brine a bird? It's about in, infusing moisture deep and flavor deep into the meat and uh, to also at the same time wash away any remnants of blood. Now we're going we're gonna to prepare this. I'm going to sprinkle it liberally with salt inside and out, sort of open up that cavity, get it down inside. We're going to be serving this with maple glazed yam and apples. So today I have a nice dice of celery and onions and, and apple. fresh apples and we're going to shove that into the cavity there. And what does that do? Does that help keep moisture on the inside? It provides aromatics. It just makes the meat taste better. Yeah. Now the next thing is we're going to truss it. So get some nice butcher twine, available a lot of places. The last step we're going to do here is I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of uh, Northwoods uh, spice. This is a spice blend that we make at the restaurant. Bird is going to go in the oven at 325. So we can see, look at how gorgeous and crisp that skin is, crackling. Very. We're going to pull that out. And just like a turkey at Thanksgiving, make sure you let your duck rest before you carve it. Of course, we have to leave the best part on, which is the skin. Absolutely. Here, we're going to take a little portion of our maple glazed jam and apples. The nice thing about the maple glazed yam and apples is you also get a nice sauce that you're able to pour across your yam and apples. And then this is a red currant jam from the garden. And that Voila. is the finishing flourish. Now, if this doesn't say fall harvest, I don't know what does. And you know what we always say? It's wildly delicious. Still ahead, the joys of logging the old-fashioned way. Giddy up, giddy up. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Hennepin County Medical Center. Minnesota Agricultural Water Resources Coalition. Minnesota Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. And by Smoothie Oil Company.
Time now for a Minnesota Bound Classic and one of my favorite stories because it involves horses, logging, and the old fashioned way. Despite what it seems, time in a forest does not stand still. Rather, it creeps slowly ahead, not much faster than an oak tree grows. But on this foggy morning, amid this foggy forest, the clock is ticking in reverse. Boy, what a beautiful day. Ticking backwards to a Minnesota logging camp as it might have been long ago. Back to the days of horses. And back to the days of horse loggers. They're good boys. The good boys are Belgian draft horses and Pertrons, each a half ton of pulling power. I pretty much am doing exactly what I planned from five on, so um, yeah, this is great. Meet horse logger Tim Carroll, CEO of Cedar River Horse Logging and Wood Products. This isn't just a job, it's a mission really to you know, I really believe in what I'm doing. I, I hope that when I'm gone, whatever I've done has left the world a better place. Hope, hope. Even a woods that is being logged, logged with horses instead of machines. All right. The one thing that most landowners that contact me have in common is um, their number one concern is improving their forest and they are sensitive to environmental concerns. Simply put, horses are more tender on the trees still standing than bulldozers. If a horse, because it's a living being, uh, starts to step on a sapling, it moves its foot around it. You know, you wouldn't step on a pencil. Well, a horse ain't gonna step on a, on a sapling if they can help it. This oak here is, uh, it's actually over mature. It's getting rotten. What I want to do is put the tree down in that direction. The purpose of that is I don't want to damage these white pines. Our whole purpose in taking this out is to uh, improve the white pine stand. So if I drop the tree on top of them, it kind of defeats the purpose. Landowner Pete Jensen chose horse logging for the same reason. When I needed to thin the, the oak trees, I was looking around for something different, something that would have less impact on the, the trees that remained. Dropping a big oak tree is only the beginning. It smells good. After lunchtime, a bowl of stew cooked outside the old fashioned way, Tim Carroll and hired hand Kurt Arner begin another process as old as log houses. Again, horses have a job to do, bringing logs to the mill, where the fallen trees are shaped for a purpose. In this case, we're cutting beams for timber framing. All the construction here is oak, and it'll be around a lot longer than I will. Whether it's in horse logging or timber framing or a lot of our traditional things that we did in the past, uh, the skills that we've had are being lost, and, and uh, it just amazes me what people knew 100 years ago that maybe we've forgotten. It's very satisfying to me to have my customers know where the tree came from, uh, and, and they have a direct connection to it. Homes and furniture and warmth. Some of us tend to forget where it all comes from. And when another tree must fall, the horse logger goes forth as a team to take what they must while leaving the forest in good health, untrampled, unscarred. I love working with animals and I love being in the woods and I can't think of anything better to do. Hard to believe that perhaps all of the logging at one time in Minnesota was done just that way. A lot about does it for us. Remember, introduce the kid of the great outdoors. I'm Ron Chera and of course the star of the show and a little antsy today is Raven. Behave. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.
For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.